Japanese Anime Presents. That time I tuned into a podcast just to listen to somebody shill for a publisher. I'm your host, Zeke Changers, along with editor and chief of Honey's Anime, the one who you can hear yelling, get in the robot, but to his cats, Alfonso Ortiz. How you doing, Fonzie? <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah, it's either the robot or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger style. Get in the choppa. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you for uh, the introductions, just, as always. You're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, just a quick recap on how we do things here. Uh, we take a look at a handful of manga or light novels that we think you should give a look at. Uh, we'll each start off with a pick, and then we'll add some additional choices that we think haven't been highlighted enough, and we'll call those Honey Chan's picks. All right, uh, my first choice is I went with an oldie but a goodie because I was very interested, especially since I heard that they're going to get a movie. Oh, Fairy Tale One Hundred Year Quest. Ah ha 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 ha! Nice. Yeah, I, um, it was nice to reconnect with some of these characters, and I am not. I, I mean, I, I. I'm not like a big fairy tale stan. I don't just sit there and, you know, watch uh -huh, Natsu uh -huh. again and again and again and again. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to watch Eden, uh, Eden Zero. Mm. It's got a lot of doppelgangers in it, including Happy, who is yes Happy. Yes, I mean I heard that it was pretty good, but I myself did not start or even begin to watch Eden because uh, because of the doppelgangers. Like it kind of like just a it threw me off it's and fairy tale in space uh, that is what we've got so yeah it, se it, it seemed like it wasn't going to be too much of a difference especially if the artist all of a sudden just rehashed the same character designs <laughs> so basically was... uh, yeah it's a modern update to fairy tale but just cool. just think of it that way yeah and um it so but you know i heard 100 year quest was going to come out as a film and i thought okay Let's take a look at Hundred Year Quest. Um, Very nice. It is. Uh, it was storyboarded uh, by uh, Hiro uh, Mashima mm -hmm. uh, and illustrated by Atsu Udi Uda U E D A. Oh, Ueda. Ueda. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sequel to Fairy Tale. Um, it focuses on Natsu, Lucy, Happy, and their friends from the Wizarding Guild and Fairy Tale, as they take on a centuries-old unfinished quest. It's an oh, extremely nice. dangerous. It's an extremely dangerous quest uh, to seal the five dragons on the continent of Guillotina. And let me tell you, with a name like Guillotina, I'm like, okay, no, I'm not going to that continent because it sounds too much like it's going to lose my head. Um, but. Uh, Natsu, Happy, Lucy, Ezra, Gray, Wendy, and Carla um, believe that they can win this quest mm -hmm. uh, because they have each other to depend on in mm -hmm. classic fairy tale fashion. Uh, we find out quickly uh, the continent itself is weird. Like land, uh, jellyfish walking on land, smiling at you, weird. <laughs> jellyfish that try and force you to eat them. And then sting the inside of your mouth. Weird. What? Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you hear Lucy talking with a, the thumb numb mouth with a thick thaw. So that was an interesting. I wonder how you translate numb mouth, but okay. Um, oh, yeah, I wouldn't is, know. <laughs> yeah, the art is uh, very classic. Uh, it, there's no real change in the art style, which is great because for me, Fairy Tale is one of those kind of comfort manga you can go to and be like, Ah, uh, this is exactly what I expect and what I want to see right now. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't take long. It did. It. Let's see. I think that volume is divided up into five chapters, and I think by chapter three, all the girls were in swimsuits in an underwater city. And in, don't in the first volume. Yeah. Oh wow! All right, that was quick. <sighs> yeah, and uh, don't worry. Um, Lucy does lose her top. Uh, and then they are turned into fish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, we get a sense that uh, the people they're going to go up against are pretty uh, pretty tough, um, like on floor boss level or greater. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I can never pronounce the, the, the big bad dragon from the finale. Oh, 
Acnologia. Acnologia. There, there's, there's hints that someone in this, in their future, is about that powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I said, I'm not what I would say a huge fairy tale fanboy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not a Natsu cosplayer going around with my own uh, fairy tale tat, but I do enjoy the series because there's, there's something kind of wholesome about it because it is, it is, at its essence, we can do it because we have the people who we love around us kind mm -hmm. of mentality. And uh, I've really, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice fun read. Absolutely the opposite of the one I'll tell you later. Ooh. So, uh, okay. <gasps> yeah. Fairy wow. tale. That sounds nice. Yeah, actually I'm, I'm, I like fairy tale a lot. Oh, I want to say I'm a huge fan of fairy tale. I did stick with it quite a bit. Um, although I didn't, I don't know if there was one extra arc that was at the end that I didn't finish, so that it might be it. But I did see Fairy really Tale like, Zero and everything. I really loved Fairy Tale Zero. I loved Fairy yes. Tale. Yes, I'm. I'm actually. I'm all about origin stories to tell you the truth because it explains a little more. It fills in some of the gaps that you would uh, otherwise not know when you're watching maybe just the regular adaptation yeah. that was probably first released. And, and and yeah, it's really nice. So like Mavis after, and Zero was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and after watching the um, watching the the series, the supposed series finale, you kind of needed to have that refresh that idea. You needed to see Zero to me to really yes. understand the impact of the end. Yes. Oh, and, and the every, feels. Oh. Yes, the feels at the very end. Yes. Mm-hmm. Definitely, so will... yeah. Definitely made it very uh, more impactful on your on your emotions. And uh, every time I pass this chain, Mavis, Tyre, and Otto uh -huh. uh, down here, uh, I think fairy tale. <laughs> There's oh. a Mavis, Tyre, and Tyre and Otto. It's a chain of mm -hmm, Tyre mm -hmm. and repair shops. I think I've heard but... of that actually. <laughs> Oh, like, that's really wow. nice. That's really yeah. cool. Okay, so I, 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 you know what? I've been actually meaning to check that out too because I also did hear about the uh, the movie that they're going to be coming out for it, for the the hundred year quest, and uh, man, yeah, because it takes after it's like it's it's a continuation after the the main storyline, you know. Yeah, the main story and ZF are done. Yeah, yeah. they so, decide to go on this. Uh, this this adventure on another continent which i know it's up so many new possibilities Man. oh uh, i forgot to mention one thing uh okay. there's this chick who shows up while natsu is away on this quest and she's like natsu sama mm -hmm. i'm going to marry this guy when he comes back okay yes. yeah what uh they even yeah i don't think i put her name down um but she is yeah this girl shows up at fairy tale joins the guild and she's like i'm doing this because i want to be with natsu uh is it toka yes I think oh. that's her name. okay yeah because i did remember uh reading the news post that we did so and they mentioned the new member it was like a specific highlight for the news post yeah and so okay 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 yeah. Yeah, so that'd be that'll be interesting when that sorts itself out. So man, was possessed by a witch. It almost oh, what? There was another character in the series. I think it was like Altier or something. That she was also kind of possessed and she was witchy in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I, well, okay, that's that's cool. I mean, I'm, I I really do want to uh, watch it. And since you read it, I know now. You know. I, I had, honestly didn't think about going back and reading it because I'm a little more on the anime side than the manga, but yeah. man, I it, I'll tell you, I, I'm been re since I've been reading manga a lot more. We're doing these podcasts. Oh yeah, it's it's something that I'll definitely check out both versions at least. All right. Nice diversion, isn't it? Yes. And uh, yes. Yeah, so what what was your diversion? So mine was uh, something a little semi off menu of like you know normal manga and everything that we normally see this is from uh, viz media which they do a lot of uh, collaborations 
um, not only with the Japanese companies, but they also, you know, work with overseas companies uh, in in like America or South America, even Europe. I've seen some people come by, and they've been bringing their works, their stories, and you know, publishing them on Viz Media and turning it into a manga while actually getting a uh, real famous or you know up and coming manga ka to work on it and then they keep the story adaptation the same from the people that they recruited so um this one uh, it's no different but it's a little more mainstream so this is uh star wars guardians of the wills the manga now okay. the guardians of the wills is basically the two individuals that are in uh, rogue one um, you have the blind, uh, almost Jedi individual, or one per, uh, the person that's one with the Force, really. Yes. He's not necessarily a legit Jedi, but pretty damn close. <laughs> and so okay. his name is uh, Chiru Imwe, and he, I think he, oh, what was he? He was played by a Chinese actor in the movie. I forget what, Donnie Yen, I believe is his name great martial art or martial artist he's he's amazing he does some really good films o- over in china uh if you like martial arts and then he has a sidekick uh his companion a friend that he has been with for a very long time they don't necessarily delve on how long they've actually been together but his name is baz malbus baz malbus or baze malbus it's b-a-z-e so this story the guardians of the wills is a prequel to Rogue One. So you get to know more about them and also the situations that they were in leading up to Rogue One and a little more about the universe around that as well. So what's really nice is that you get to see more of these characters, more of Chirut's uh, humbleness and his way of the Force and how he presents himself. And of course, you know, the overly cautious and brute uh bays and best of friends they'll always stick to with each other and they're the living hero? where have i heard that you know <laughs> kind of he's 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 overly cautious but he really loves to have guns and and just go out with a bang if he really needs to so so that's kind of like his uh his uh, mo <laughs> in a sense and they're both very loyal individuals they they care about others and, and especially their planet or the city that they're in uh Jetta. so it is a uh, it's a great read basically you see how they live which they are pretty much kind of like you know not so much rebels by title but they do help out the citizens you know it's like a little robin hood kind of story going on uh, they 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 go against the stormtroopers in the empire, and they steal medical supplies and uh, food, along as weapons as well. But they don't they don't keep the weapons because that's not what they're all about. So they give that to someone else, whoever's helping them out with their with their heist. And what they do with the food and medicine is they go to a specific orphanage in the city of Jeddah, and basically they donate all that to the orphans and they they sustain themselves uh by you know keeping a little bit but always at the bare minimum they give everything to the orphans so it's like a very heroic storyline and I, I really like it um throughout their uh their lives as they're doing this and committing uh or you know completing heist after heist to save these children and also you know bring hope towards the the city of Jeddah and its people you see them coming across an individual that you do see in Rogue One, and that is Saw Guerrera. Huh. Um, so those who don't know who Saw Guerrera is, it's a uh, he's he's a uh, one of the main general re- uh, rebels that helps as much as possible within the universe and the storyline of Star Wars. Um, so in Rogue One, the actor that plays him is Forrest Whitaker. Yes, which lends weight to any role. Yes, even he, even even when he was playing a uh, cyclone in oh, Battlefield Earth. Yes, he yes, he lent weight to that role too. Oh, Battlefield Earth! That is like 
<laughs> There's one movie that probably he doesn't want to mention, and if it's ever brought up, I'm sure he has nice things to say about it. But <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh god. Uh, one of John Travolta's uh, uh, many failed films that he started. Yes. But it's weird, you know. It's a sci-fi uh, theme to it. Uh, you know, aliens and monsters, and you know, like domination and survival and whatnot. It's it's. I like those things. I'll, I'll watch them regardless. It's great. I I grew up, you know, watching Battlestar Galactica for Christ's sakes. Yeah. And so I'm I'm all about those. But you know, critics obviously. And he's referring yeah. to Galactic seventy eight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Not not uh, Galactica two thousand. Yes, Which yes, yes. It's a yes. very different kind of universe. It is a different kind of universe. It, it, it's it's definitely more accurate and faithful in, in a sense to the to the books. But then you know the the, the newer one, the two thousand one, that one definitely brought a little more action and entertainment to, uh, to the yeah. to the eyes. It was very visually right. appeasing, so it was very very cool. But yeah, so th- that's like it's almost got that same kind of concept with his character Saw Guerrera. And uh, he's, you know, he's there to help out, but he says one thing, but obviously has an ulterior motive to another. So that kind of is unraveled within the story. Um, so he's helping, uh, well, the the two guardians of the wills, uh, Trudy and, and uh, Baze, or Baze. <laughs> I, I really want to know. I have to watch Rogue One to see how they said his name because I completely forgot how they pronounced his name. <laughs> But yeah, so they're you know they're trying to help these orphans out, and the people of Jeddah, the Empire keeps taking over until Saw comes into the picture and wants to help him out, and he does. And then they realize that it's not really helping; they're just you know delaying the inevitable. Um, so they wanted to try and figure out how they can uh, actually make a difference, and by using Saw, they uh, come up with a plan to take these kids off the planet and out of Jeddah to a better place where there is no Imperial uh, soldiers or rule. And so I was like, okay, we can do this. You know, there's a ship coming in. It's big enough to hold all these kids. And at the moment, you know, the Empire is uh, creating havoc. They're getting stricter on their on their curfews. Uh, it's already gotten to the point to where now they're basically arresting everyone because of what Chiru and Bays have been doing, which is committing these heists and stealing. So the you know the Empire obviously, if they don't know who they're trying to punish, they'll just go ahead and punish the civilians and try yes, like to collective you know, punishment. Yep. Yes. And so that's what ended up happening and that's why they want to get these orphans out because now the basically, you know, there's there's no hope anymore. Even though Chiru is a uh, motto is to always have hope. His his his, his phrase, you know, um wow, what was it? it is a uh the force is with me and I am one with the force. Is his, uh, like his yeah, yeah, his very popular phrase that he always keeps saying. He t- says the same thing. That's his philosophy. And, and yeah, so they get on this ship, or they're about to get on this ship until it was revealed that Saw had ulterior motives and actually wanted to use the ship to uh, fix it as a, 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 a bomb, a detonating bomb, where the ship will go to a Star Destroyer that's hovering over the city of Jeddah. And they wanted to destroy it. But obviously, you know, that's not necessarily going to solve anything. They're kind of back to square one in a sense. But this was yeah. happening in real time as they were trying to get these kids out. So, you know, there was a lot of pressure. Um, yes. And plans have changed. one Star Destroyer doesn't, I mean, really, one Star Destroyer? You've seen how many Star Destroyers they Oh, have. gosh, yes. I they mean, they yeah. have a lot. Uh, Hundreds. Just, just destroying one Star Destroyer is not going to put up. Exactly. Uh, a dent in the mm-hmm. Imperial Army. Yeah, it's only going to cause more problems and more Imperial rule to come and, you know, just wreak havoc however they please. Especially when you destroy a, a, dis- a Star Destroyer, it's like, oh, they're, these people have no, you know, order. They're just savages and they're just they're, they're killing our people. Wow, well, now we get to kill them. So it's just going to turn into a, just complete yeah. anarchy. And so they ended up convincing 
uh, not saw, but his followers that were there to uphold the the plan. They ended up convincing him that you know these kids they have a future. Destroying a star destroyer is not gonna secure any future. It's only gonna delay it or just make things worse. But they he's right. like we have these kids here. They're they're orphans. They're parentless because of what they've been doing. Their parents were dying either by accident or you know uh because of what they were doing you know like intentionally and so there ended up there ended up being like 34 orphans that they had to get off and so they all got them off on the plane or on the ship and this was a special ship that doesn't need to dock with the star destroyer it can just go into space go into hyperdrive and just get the heck out so it was like a perfect plan for them and that's what they ended up doing. And then Shiru and Baze stay on Jeddah to continue the fight on their on on their planet. Uh, well, Baze it's more Baze's planet. I'm not sure if it's Shiru's planet. It sounds like he probably came from another uh, world, but has been here most of his life. It looks like right, right, and everything. And then, and yeah, and then that's basically how the story ends. I'm sure, well, at least for the first volume, I'm sure there are going to be more that are going to continue this story, and it's definitely going to lead up to the connection with Rogue One. And and I actually, I look forward to that. I would like to read that. So if the next volume that comes out, I'm all about it. Uh, and then the 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 adapted story was uh, by John Sui, who also did other uh star wars adaptations uh or storytellings and in, in the universe so he was brought on to this and um basically is based on the novel by greg rucka who is the original writer for for this uh this wonderful story of the guardians of the wills and then the art is done by subaru and he is the same uh mangaka that did the Star Wars, the Luke Skywalker uh, uh, story. Uh, that was good. Yeah, the Legends of Luke Skywalker, the manga. Yeah, yeah. That, was the, yeah. that was a good manga, yeah. So. Yes, that one I also did read. I, I believe you or one of the writers did a review on it. So yes. you go, if you guys want to check it out, go see our review. It's on the website. Just type in Star Wars, uh, the Luke Sky or Legends of the Luke, of, uh, the Legends of Luke Skywalker, sorry. <laughs> And it should be there. It's really good. I love these. You know, it's it's like the manga version of the Clone Wars animation show that's on. So like, you know, it's like a story filler. Yeah. It fills in the blanks it, uh, and the, or the plot if there are any if there are any plot holes. Um, and it's it's really nice. It's a great addition to the universe of Star Wars and and franchise. And I, I do recommend it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, as I was telling you earlier, um, the second pick. This uh, other pick I have here mm -hmm. is very different than Fairy Tale. Okay. I would say uh, it's not Honey's pick, but Bon Bon's pick. Bon Bon's ah. After Dark. Uh, bon Bon. Bon Bon's After yeah. Dark. Uh, it is the book. Ba it is based on the book by Kyo Hiratori. The mangaka is J. Ta Yamada, and the title is. J.K. Haru is a sex worker in another world. <laughs> so, the stu the high school student Haru Koya uh, Koyama and her classmate Seiji Chiba are killed in a traffic accident, and then they are teleported together to another world, where Chiba becomes an adventurer and goes out to slay monsters. But Haru discovers that women are not allowed to have special powers in this new world. So, she decides to make a living as a sex worker and uh <laughs> i'm gonna say i uh, hope you don't get embarrassed too easily if you're listening because the first thing they talk about is a middle ages method of contraception that invert involves a grassy paste that goes <laughs> uh into haru uh so and then they talk about how you scrape it out so oh this, boy this this, this the, the uh, storyteller did a good job of researching some of this. Um, I heard a very similar method during the Renaissance that involved a sponge and honey. That um, is interesting. You yeah. know, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Joan Rivers, 
uh, famous comedian and, yeah. and actress, she did a, a comedy bit that was something like this because she was working with the company in real life and they were trying to come up with like this new contraceptive and they're like oh you know would you one of the questions was it's like when you're doing it or when you're uh, developing it do you guys want it to be in pill form or cream and she was like well not pill or they decided not to pill because you know guys can can use it against them or something like that or and so it's like oh why yeah. not just do it as a cream but the basis of this was not so much to prevent it was actually supposed to be like the female version of viagra <laughs> and so so they're like yeah not pill because you can you can drug a girl in a bar and it's like it's better to be cream because it's hard for a guy to try it and put cream on a girl in a bar <laughs> and all this stuff <laughs> and, <laughs> and i can imagine john rivers talking like this the entire time oh yeah well yeah john, with her john, john rivers the female version of Regis. Yes. So, yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry, I digress. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, her class, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, she goes all into. I mean, she really does. Uh, she works hard. She waits the tables. She sees clients, and uh, tries to meet and surpass sales goals. Mm-hmm. Kind of like in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, yeah. they're always talking about their sales goals, uh, quotas, um, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> her classmate Seiji comes to see her at work, and she's fine with him as a client, but uh, deep down, he's still an otaku, and she continually overpowers him in the bedroom. Uh, he's an absolute nerd and awful at sex. It was very painful to watch or read. Um. She does her I can best imagine. to make yeah, she does her best to make this dork feel good. Um, but he's really a sad lay. Um, she has a few good friends, of course. There are other prostitutes. Uh, she makes the most of her life. She isn't like an woe is me, this sucks. She kind of enjoys her life. Um, she enjoys sex. Even and she wasn't even like a a a, a, a guy ru. Um, she wasn't like a gal gal. Oh, yeah, like, like, I yeah, see. She more like a, a, she was like a, a regular average girl. Um, something that is laying in here, which I thought was good, was there's a commentary on what happens in this case to women when they aren't left avenues for independence. Hmm. Uh, women are either wives or servants mm-hmm. or kept as slaves. Um, hmm. There, the this points out that if they don't have access to education, if they don't have access to be allowed to run a business, if they don't have access to uh, to pursue other things in the workforce, um, that you know there are very few options for an independent woman who isn't cared for by a man, and I, I, they do a good job at. Uh, that's littered that's dropped it kind of in a subtext throughout the entire uh, manga so i really i really enjoyed it for that i enjoyed it for its honesty um you know it's still a manga it does gloss over probably some of the more gruesome things but you know she she has her good clients she has her bad clients Mm -hmm. and we do get to see a little bit of both so I thought this was a very interesting story. I'm actually interested in seeing what happens uh, in the next volume. Uh, it does sound pretty interesting, and yes, definitely somewhat of uh, uh, inadequacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but uh... but ultimately, yeah. I you know I really wonder because it does seem pretty accurate as far as the times and what they're you know depicting. But oh, man, you, like I don't read much of those in a sense, and then like what's because of modern time and everything. If I were to read how they treated people back in the day, especially women, it, it would definitely irk me here and there. Yes, yes, it, it does, and you know, and I, I think it's a good reminder for any reader that you know, at least it gets some of the jog in the back of their mind that you mm-hmm. know without equal access to things in mm-hmm. certain segments of society whether they be female or whatever mm-hmm. end up one section ends up suffering without equal access and mm-hmm. i think that's a that's an important point that the mangaka was making 
I or see. The, the novelist was making that the mangaka then translated. I see. Okay. Why? Yeah, you, hey, you said you uh, read something interesting on Honeyfeed? Yes. So I do want to introduce a Honeyfeed light novel platform to all of our listeners right now. Uh, if you have not heard of it, it's uh, one of our sister sites. It is a novel platform for anyone who wants to tell a story, has a story to tell. Um, maybe like, you know, you want to be an aspiring writer. You can definitely try it out here. We've got thousands and thousands of members who are more than willing to help out, you know, give you some critique, very positive critique too, you know, because, you know, every writer wants to help another writer in this scene that we've created and it, it's wonderful. And so we are holding a contest right now, which I believe the entries uh, have already ended the first stage. So now we are selecting preliminaries. And so I was uh, one of the judges helping out by reading some of the, the, the novels there on the website. Uh, it's, it's very nice. It had me going really, really nicely. It was, it was funny. So, this one I am going to go ahead and just uh, recommend. Uh, there's no, you know, I, I wasn't influenced by it. We're not being paid or anything. I just wanted to go ahead and recommend because it, it kind of stuck with me. It was, it was really funny. So it's a, it's a novel called Slasher. And it is somewhat of a, you know, like a, like a gore kind of not necessarily horror but it could be a horror based off of what it's uh what its theme is so yeah it's like a like a like a horror kind of gore comedy uh read and you start off with the character who um i'm assuming by the cover uh, at least the cover art that they had on there you know it kind of looks like a jason he's got you know overall like i think like red shirt and overalls a little hockey mask on and then he has like a machete and so he is an individual who is basically, you know, a murderer, serial killer in a sense, but does it with a mask on. So he has like this little hidden persona. And he one night goes out and he's, you know, he's picking his next kill because he doesn't just kill for no reason. He has like, you know, particular uh, victims that he likes to choose. And so he chose one. <clears throat> And he's about to, you know, go up to these to this couple, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, I picked the right one. They look pretty good. They look like they're gonna give me quite scream, something that I'll enjoy. And he's gonna, and as he goes up there, and he's getting ready for the kill, he's got them. He's about to slash them. He notices another killer across the way, doing the same exact thing. And that killer notices him too, and they lock eyes. And because they lock eyes, it turns into like this little comedic standoff. Where he's like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one here. But what do I do? Do I finish killing these these my my victims of choice, or should I watch out for him and go kill him? And so like the other the other killers are going through the same thing, obviously, and they decided to just go and kind of go after each other. And and what happens was that the victims, both of them, both of their victims escape, and they have like a little standoff and they're trying to fight. And it just turns into this really funny thing because, like, it's more it's more of comedic commentary than what's actually happening. <laughs> but it's really good. And I, I only read, I think, like, three uh, the first three chapters so far, and I do plan on going back and, and reading some more. Uh, but just that, just that setup, which is really interesting. And then I think in a way, if I remember correctly, it turns into kind of like a battle royale competition where you had a bunch of other slashers. Uh, well... Let's just call these killers slashers, because I think that's what they're called. Like you're a slasher, basically. Okay. And All right. and so, like he ends up, I believe, yeah, I believe he ends up like being contacted, finds out about some competition to see who's going to be the number one slasher in their area or the world or whatever. And that same guy ends up being there. And so now there's like this grudge. It's like, what the heck are you doing here <laughs> and all this stuff. And and. That's and then that's basically where it kind of ends. You know, it was a nice little uh, cliffhanger off the third chapter, which is was, was a, a good read. Uh, the writing's really good, storytelling is awesome, and then just the scenario and the theme for it was was wonderful. I liked it a lot. Well, that is that that's great to know. Um, it, it's always fun to find new talent 
and uh, I think that's one of those things that Honeybeat really does let us do. It's it's find that new talent. Um, yes. Especially yes. being the one to be like, yeah, remember I told you about this guy? This guy's stuff was good. And mm -hmm. then, you know, years later, being able to say, yep, I read it first. Mm -hmm. I read it when it was beta. Yep. <laughs> like, like uber beta. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, yeah, it's it's really good. And, yeah, that was a hidden gem on the website. And trust me, there are plenty more because I've read some other ones that I really enjoyed as well. This one just stuck with me the most because I like horror. And since Halloween's coming up, it reminded me of, of it as well. And I keep being reminded. And the comedy is great. All righty. Um, well, then, uh, we'd like to remind everybody that uh, shows like this aren't possible without the guys who bring us and share with us uh, the manga and light novels like Honeyfeed or mm -hmm. Viz Media or Yen Press or Seven Seas or J Novel or Square Enix or Kodanasha or uh, today's new one um, Hayakawa Publishing uh, for JK Haru is a sex worker in another world mm -hmm. uh, and uh, without these we could not uh, be doing what we're doing. And especially, we couldn't do what we're doing if it wasn't for Honey's Anime, which is the place for the anime enthusiast. So yes. until next time, uh, for Fonzie and myself, we thank you for listening and keep reading. Yes. And also, keep an eye out on Honey Feed for the preliminary voting, where you, the reader, viewer, if you guys want to help out with the judging you will be able to do that. And you can also get to read these stories on the website when we put them up. Uh, I believe there might be a special section that we're going to have them up so it's easy to find for the, the, the contestants. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it.